99 of the Trump presidency. And there's the fa fancy animation. Again today, the president dismissed the importance of tomorrow's 100-day milestone, calling it a false standard. So tonight we'll focus on what's left in his first term, what lies ahead in our week-long series. Here's correspondent Kristen Fisher. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It's tough to predict what the next 100 days will look like with a president as unpredictable as this one. I like to think of myself as a very flexible person. I don't have to have one specific way, and if the world changes, uh, I go the same way. I don't change. Well, I do change, and I am flexible, and I'm proud of that flexibility. Given that President Trump prides himself on being flexible, what are some guarantees that you can give us about what we can expect over the next 100 days? You can guarantee that he's going to continue to work hard for the American people. When he says he's flexible, I think what he means is that he's going to get the job done. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says getting the job done over the next 100 days means repealing and replacing Obamacare, renegotiating and possibly terminating the North American Free Trade Agreement, reducing the nuclear threat from North Korea, and making major inroads on tax reform. But in order to make deep and lasting changes to the tax code, President Trump will likely need some Democrats to sign off on it. Any more deal making with Democrats over the next 100 days? Will he be reaching out to them any more than he has in the first 100? I think he is a deal maker. He's a successful deal maker. And I think you're going to continue to see him work uh, with members of both sides of the aisle and both chambers to get things done. But the tax reform plan laid out two days ago offered zero sweeteners, no funding for infrastructure spending, as many Democrats had hoped. For a president who said he's going to shake up Washington, get things moving, he's going to do things differently. He could do it in a way that other presidents were unsuccessful because of his deal-making abilities. He's got to be able to show that he actually can do that. Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report and a past recipient of the Washington Post's Crystal Ball Award predicts that President Trump's first 100 days are not a fair gauge of his future success. They've been rough. It's been the learning curve of a lifetime. But that steep learning curve is precisely why Walter argues that this president's first 100 days matter less than any of his predecessors. Now the question is, has the party and the president learned from the difficulties they've had in these first 100 days, taking those lessons and using them to go forward to pass the major legislative things that they want to accomplish? Hanging over all future accomplishments, at least for the next few months, possibly years, will be the cloud of congressional and FBI investigations into his campaign's ties to Russia. There's also the questionable fate of his two most controversial executive orders, his proposed travel ban and crackdown on sanctuary cities. But ironically, his signature issue, the issue he's most famous for promising to reform, immigration, is also the issue where we first saw his heart change his mind. We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me. DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, was the first time President Trump said his heart played a significant role in his decision-making process. The strike in Syria was the second time, a response to the country's president using chemical weapons on his own people. In a recent interview, President Trump admitted that one of the biggest lessons he's learned over the last 100 days is that, quote, pretty much everything you do in government involves heart, whereas in business, most things don't involve heart. In fact, in business, you're actually better off without it. Do you think we're going to see more governing with heart over the next 100 days? I think you've seen a lot of it, and you're going to continue to see more of it. Over the next 100 days, President Trump will also embark on his first foreign trips, starting off at the NATO summit in Belgium and then to the G7 summit in Italy. There's also talk of sending American astronauts on a trip to Mars more than a decade ahead of schedule. Well, we want to try and do it during my first term, or at worst, during my second term, so I'll have to speed that up a little bit, okay? Was he being serious? And if so, how does he plan to pull that off? Well, I think he's, he's already talked about that uh, in his joint address, how, how much space exploration yields. But that's a much faster timeline no, well, than again, I think he what was NASA a little, originally right, had planned. But, but he, was, he was having uh, a discussion with Dr. Peggy Whitson, the president, like always, he likes to get things done under budget and under time. Uh, so when they were having a discussion about when and how soon they could get to Mars, he said, as he does with everything else, let's get it done sooner and cheaper. But that would be an 
an enormous challenge for NASA, especially since it just delayed the first test launch of the rocket that will try to get them there. Almost every expert in the aerospace industry agrees that if President Trump really wants to speed up these manned missions to Mars, then he'll need to give NASA the one thing it needs most, money. Brett? Kristen, thank you. That